All right, so we'll begin today in a seated position in staff pose. Just take a moment to stretch out through your feet, balance through your sit bones, rest your hands next to your hips on the floor, and then feel the back of your head line up over the back of your hips. Feel your heart line up over your pelvis, and then feel your core engage. Breath is really important here, of course, as in any practice, so really focus on the expansion of the inhale and the soft contraction of the exhale. You're welcome to incorporate ujjayi breath or your natural breath with a focus on equal rounds of breath. So inhale and exhale equally. Use your next exhale to start to hinge forward into Paschimottanasana seated forward fold. You can inch your hands out slowly with each passing breath. And again, focusing on making the breaths equal. And maybe even eventually focusing on that exhale being slightly longer than the inhale. With your backside of your body a little bit more open and expanded, focus on breathing into the back of your body, into the back ribs. A soft bend in your knees is welcome here if you feel like there's too much pull on your back or if this pose is just simply too intense at the beginning of class. Also, any props are welcome throughout the rest of the class. We'll probably be using a couple blocks coming forward into um, an arm balance that we're going to do. It might be helpful to have two blocks. Using your next inhale, then start to lift back up. Walk your hands back in towards your staff shape. Walking your hands back in next to your hips, line your head back up over your hips again, and then start to roll over your hands and knees to tabletop pose. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Neutral position here with your spine, just a moment to check back in with your breath. And then just one simple round of cat-cow. So inhale, open your chest in the cow stretch. And then on your exhale, round your spine in the cat stretch. Draw an inhale here into your back as you start to sit back towards your heels. And then exhale once you're there, soften into the pose just for one round of breath. Your next inhale, come forward all the way down to your hips for cobra pose. Point your toes back, engage your thighs, and lift your chest and belly. Expand from your heart, expand from your throat, and breathe into those open areas now. The heart and chest, belly, rib area, front rib area. Elbows are bent. Feel the triceps working to press the elbows towards straight, but resisting using your back muscles, using your glutes to maintain the back bend. Exhale, lower down, nice and slow. Let the back bend come out slowly. Press back up through table on your next inhale. Tuck your toe pads under. Start to lift your knees and press up and back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Breathe here around the abdominals, around the ribs, three-dimensionally feeling the breath circle and spiral. You can bend the knees here. You can lift your heels here. Actively press your arms forward and connect to each digit, each fingerprint, each knuckle on your mat. With that strong hand connection, bend your knees and look forward and see where you're going to go. You're going to step or hop up and come down to seated position, back into your staff shape. And that's just for a moment, so you can then roll down onto your back, and we're going to move into shoulder stands, the Lam Sarbhangasana. If you want to use any additional props here, blankets or bolsters, pillows, gather those and set up your shoulder stand. Once you roll up onto your shoulders, walk your hands up your back higher towards your shoulder blades, and your elbows creep in a little closer toward each other, creating an external rotation of the upper arm bone. So here your breath, you're focusing on breathing into, um, almost like you could think about breathing into your hands. So press your breath into your back and expand. Keep the neck open and long. And keep the weight out of your neck so you've got those feet pressing back over your hands rather than dropping over your face. Exhale. 
And then we're going to transition this into plow pose in just a moment. So as you're exhaling, let your feet fall overhead. Then if your toes land comfortably on the floor, you can interlace your fingers behind your back and lower your arms down to the ground. But again, you're using those shoulders and your arms as the main uh, weight uh, foundational support of this pose, not your neck, not your head. And if your toes are on the floor or on a block or stool over your head, press into the floor with your feet. Press into the block or the chair, whatever you're using under your feet, and engage your thighs. Engage your thigh muscles. Notice if you're overworking your core, you're going to feel a little cramps in the front core line because the next position, Karna Pidas in quiet pose, those cramps will get much worse. So be aware of that. Try to soften the front core line a little bit and drop your knees down towards your ears. Or another alternative would be to drop your knees towards your forehead. And if it's too intense to keep your, your hands in the mudra behind you, you could take your hands back up to your back for extra support. And here, breathe into that back. Breathe into the open space of your back. Okay, flatten out your palms on the floor, widen out your arms so you can roll down to your hips, legs up in the air for just a moment. Then once you feel your sacrum land, bend your knees and take your feet to the floor. Cross your ankles here and let your knees drop open. It's kind of like bound angle, but it's easy seated. And then lift up to your elbows and start to scoot your head in closer to your butt until you get your entire spine off the floor and the top of your head on the mat for fish, matsyasin. Your hands can come down and stretch towards your thighs. You could also keep your elbows on the floor for extra support. And then a block under your head is another really good modification here if you can't quite get your head to the floor. But your head should be pushing into something, creating the space in the front of your body, body that you can breathe into. And trying to keep that breath even, remembering that exhale can slightly uh, be a little longer. Inhale, use your elbows to lift your head and come back down to the floor. And exhale there. So the next transition I'm going to take is Chakrasana. It's a backwards roll into Chaturanga. You're welcome to come up to seated and step back into plank pose and take Chaturanga. And then from your Chaturanga, inhale into Cobra or upward facing dog. Right, use your next exhale then to come over to hands and knees back into tabletop pose. Resituate yourself on your mat if you got off of it there for a second. Back into table. Just for a breath or two here. Kind of like staff pose, just grounding. Then lower back down to your hips. We're going to move into locust. Hands come back behind you with your fingertips still on the floor. Lift your feet. Lift your chest. Lift your chin. And then you can feel your fingers continuously stretching back until you lift your ribs even off the floor. Look up to the ceiling. Adding on if you'd like to grab your ankles for bow, danyurasan, or you can stick with locust. Keep pressing back with your feet if you've got locust. If you've got hands to feet, still pressing back with your feet, but now you've got a connection there. So you're pulling your shoulders open with your feet pressing back. Exhale to come down out of it. Take as long as you need on your belly to resituate and then back up into tabletop pose. Come up into a kneeling position. The next back bend, Ustrasan. So if you need a blanket under your knees, pad up your knees. Separate your knees as much as you need before you take your hands back to your heels or hands to a couple blocks on either side of your feet. Maybe hands are on the uh, hips. Like you're sticking your hands in your pockets and your hips are lifting up, chest is lifting up. One big inhale here. Keep your chin drawing in so your head isn't flopping back. Exhale and then on your next inhale, press into your knees and pull up with your core. All right, come back, hips to heels, hands back on the floor so you can slowly transition back into a seated position without freaking out your low back. Back into staff pose, dandasan. Again, hands on the floor. Feel the grounding of your hands, grounding of the backs of your sit bones. And then lower yourself down slowly to your back. All right, another back bend here. We're going to take Ordva Danyarasan. Hands on the floor. Or if you've got blocks, you could put your hands on two blocks. 
You could stick the blocks against the wall so they don't slide. You could also lift your heels or place your feet on two blocks and then press into the floor or the blocks that you're using and press your shoulders back over your wrists. Widen out your feet as much as you need to open up the space in your low back. You work towards straight-ish arms. The knees remain bent, knees over your ankles. This pose, you don't have to stay very long, so bend your elbows chin to chest and lower slowly back down to the floor and let your sacrum rest on the ground. Your knees can rest together or apart. Relax your inner thighs. And then we're going to come back up to seated. You can roll up to seated or press up. And we're going to move into a seated forward fold. The first one will be Janu Shirshasan. So I'm going to have my left leg straight. Right foot comes up to the inside of my left thigh. Right knee is bent out towards the side of the room. Let your right hip fall back as far as you need in order to fold out over your left leg, allowing your left sit bone to scoot back behind you. Feel that rotation in your left hip. There's action in your right leg as well, so you're pressing the bent right knee away from you. And you're stretching your chest, top of your head, you know, your breath towards your left big toe. However, you can imagine that energetic uh, stretch towards the left foot. Good inhale to come up out of this first side of Janu Shirshasan, straighten out the right leg. Set your left leg into Janu Shirshasan, head of the knee pose, left foot inside of your right thigh. And when you fold over your right leg again, let the right sit bone stretch back and let that left knee move open as much as you need in order to facilitate that movement, that rotation in the hips. And then again, stretching your sternum towards your right foot. Use a block under your head if you feel like you want to rest your forehead, but your shin is way too far away. Breathe into the back side of your body here. And feel that space, the breath taking up all the space that you're creating here. And that'll help calm down your nervous system in this forward fold. And then on your next inhale, start to lift up. Lift your head up and take your right ankle and left ankle together, crossing ankles in a seated position. Just a moment of seated Nothing, just being here. Follow your breath. Notice the space between the breath. Notice the length of each breath. We're going to move into an arm balance next. So the prep is to practice chaturanga. So right here, I'm going to lean into my chaturanga arms and shoot my feet back. So I would say revisit that for a few time, a few moments, or you can move on to the next option I'm going to give you. So I'm going to work through a series of progressions of Mayarasan peacock pose. So that, that was just one. You can sit in easy seated and shoot back chaturanga. The next is to start to work the hand placement. So you've got to flip your fingers back and walk them in between your legs, pinkies together, elbows together, elbows in your stomach, feet go back into an elbow plank. Mayaras and lift your feet, lower them down, lift your feet, lower them down. That is very, very challenging. So here are the blocks that I was talking about we could use for this posture. So I'm going to take my shoulders to the blocks. I'm going to take my hands in between my legs with the fingers pointing back. Now that might be tough for your wrists, so you might have to take fingers pointing out away from each other wrist to wrist. Then lift your feet up and step them back or shoot them back. And then play with here, lifting your shoulders off the floor or lifting one foot off the, or sorry, shoulders off the blocks <laughs> or one foot off the floor. And you can think of it as a teeter totter back and forth. So you can hold one leg, lower it and hold the other leg. Make sure your elbows are squeezing in together towards your belly button. All right, so that's another option that you can play with. Knees come down, and then you can sit back and stretch your wrists, actually. So this is another little thing to play with if you think wrist mobility is what's holding you up here. Here with the wrist um, stretch, you can have your fingers pointing back. Okay, I'm going to set up now with the blocks at the back of my mat. Hands come in between my legs, fingers pointing back, pinkies together, 
wrist pointing forward, elbows squeeze into my belly, and then my feet come back and walk over and around to the blocks so that one can come up on the block and then the other on the block. And then that, I'm using my toes on the blocks to push my chest forward, open my heart, and here's my arasan. And you're going to feel your glutes working. Okay, coming out of that's not always so easy, so be careful. I was really in a rush to get out of that. All right, so now here's one other little option you can play with. Feet in bound angle will help. And when your feet are in bound angle or lotus, this pose is 10 times easier because you don't have the extra weight pulling you back and down. So as soon as I straighten my legs back, I go down. All right, so play with that. And then when you're finished child's pose, you can rewind and revisit any of those options at any point in time or skip it. <laughs> you know, these are your practices. So make wise decisions. But when you are finished, you're going to, after child's pose, after a nice rest in child's pose, come back to a seated position. And again, just take as long there as you need until you find your calm. We're going to then move into Gomukhasana cow face. You can wrap your right leg over the top of your left leg and shoestring your legs up. You can take your heels in closer or out farther away. Play with it. Left arm up above head, right arm down below for Gomukhasana arms. You're also welcome to skip the arms here. If you're hooking your fingers, hook the pads of your fingers and the thumbs just kind of wrap around the pinkies. Then if your hands don't connect, maybe you, you use a strap or you can use your shirt to grab onto. If you're using the cow face arms, press your head gently back into your arm, internally rotate your, or actually internally, um, your triceps just kind of roll in. You're actually externally rotating that top of that left arm, but squeeze the left triceps in. All right, release your hands. Relax your shoulders, and then we'll switch sides. So you can lean back and unwrap your legs and then rewrap your legs the opposite, left leg on top. And here I'm going to show you I'm sitting on the heel for a little bit more of a traditional approach to the posture. And then the right hand goes up and the left hand comes up from behind and below. So your right elbow is on top. Another option here is to use your left hand to cup your right elbow and kind of pull it over behind your head. If sitting on your heel was not really good for balance, if it was wobbly, go ahead and take your foot out. And then again, turn the right triceps in towards your face, externally rotating the upper arm of the right side, and then soften your left shoulder. And the left shoulder is now internally rotating. Head back over your hips, draw the front ribs in, and then you can release your arms and let the shoulders rest for just a moment. Let them reset. And you can sit in an easy seated cross leg pose for another moment or two to recollect your breath, recheck, like check back in with your breath and downward facing dog as you're ready. Adho Mukha Svanasana. We're going to move into a standing pose. So from downward facing dog, take as long as you need. But when you're ready, right foot's going to step forward and come up with your arms open, straighten the right leg, right hand to your right shin or foot, trikonasan, triangle shape, triangle pose. Press your left heel back. Stretch your chest over the line of your right toes. And then here, squeeze the right thigh, externally rotating, externally rotating it to toward the pinky toe side of your mat and let your left hip turn in slightly. Gaze could be up or down. Just one more big breath here and place your hands back on the floor so you can step back downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Catch that breath, balance it out, lengthen your exhale slightly longer. And then step forward with your next breath, left foot steps, come up to a standing position, triangle shape in your legs and straighten out your left leg. As you exhale, take your left hand towards your left shin or your foot, right hand presses up to the ceiling and see if you can lengthen and stretch across the upper trapezius, the upper neck and shoulder muscles. Again, let the right hip turn forward slightly. Let the left hip rotate out slightly, not popping your left sit bone out but allowing for some space to lengthen your spine, lengthen your torso. 
and squeeze your thigh bones with your thigh muscles. Okay, inhale and then exhale, hands back to the floor. Step directly back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. And again, find that breath, breathing from your belly, expanding three-dimensionally around the torso. Lift your sit bones, look forward, and then step or hop up to seated. You can jump through if you'd like. We're going to take a twist. So cross your right ankle over the outside of your left knee, and then wrap your left heel up around your right hip. Ardhamatsi and Drasan, half Lord of the Fishes. You can hug with your left arm. You can hook or you can bind. Right hand can stay on the floor behind you, or you can take your right hand and hook it around your left inner thigh. Squeeze your right thigh towards your left ribs, and your left ribs rotate into your left thigh. As that rotation is happening, use your back muscles to lengthen your chest up to the ceiling without using your shoulders. You use your back and your core muscles. And then again here, breathe right into that open right side. Okay, unhook your arms, and then we will set up for the second side. A moment in staff pose just to untwist. So there's not any residual twisting left over from the first side when we move into the second. Okay, wrap your right heel up around your left hip, and then your left ankle hooks on the outside of your right thigh. Right knee should be pointing straight forward, and the left knee should be up to the ceiling. Again, you're squeezing your right ribs in towards your left thigh and not letting your left foot open, or uh, like your left knee open out. So the left foot is flat on the floor. And then again, either hooking or hugging your arm or binding. Notice if there's a collapse in the right ribs and try to space out those right ribs a little bit more. You've got to use your deep, deep core muscles for that, the spinal muscles. Keep the left thigh squeezing into the right ribs. That'll keep your left hip from falling back excessively. It can definitely rotate but not too much. We don't want the twist to come from the hips. There's mobility in your hips, but that's not the initiation of the twist. Good, one more big smooth inhale here, and then you can release, uncross your legs, exhale, staff pose. All right, I'm going to move back into a hands and knees position so you can rock over your ankles or you can pick up and I guess hop back to your knees. If you want to chaturanga, you could take it if you'd like. Then I'm going to transition right into virasan hero pose, sitting between my heels with my toes pointing straight back, hands resting on my thighs. I'm taking just a moment to breathe here. Again, noticing the pace of the breath, the movement of my breath, where it's moving from and to, in and out of my nose. I can feel the coolness and the warmth as I inhale and exhale, respectively. I can feel the temperature in my throat. The texture of the breath feels very smooth in my throat. It also feels, the, from beginning to end of each inhale, it feels a, like a very smooth, silky breathing. And I know that might maybe sound kind of weird, but I want you to think if your breath were a fabric, what fabric would it be? Satin or velvet or burlap? And try to smooth it out. All right, and then come back up into a tabletop position. And just for a moment, let your knees relax. Let your hips come out of that stretch and then sit back over your feet. Dandasan, staff pose. And then half lotus, right heel to the left hip crease. If you're practicing full lotus, left heel to the right hip crease. If you're practicing zero lotus, cross your ankles and enjoy an easy seated position. I'm going to forward fold here with a bind, Baddha Padmasana. So I'm going to take my left hand around to my left foot, and I can stay there with right hand on the right knee and just work that bind. Or lean forward, and then the other hand has to wrap around and catch the foot. In order to do that, I need to extend my spine, and then I can fold. Now, if you're 
feeling really sweaty from the practice and the hands are slippery, it's not going to work. If your hips aren't open enough, if your knees aren't pointing forward enough, if your heels aren't high enough on your hips, you're not going to be able to get to your feet. And if that's the case, no big deal. Take your hands and grab your opposite elbows and then relax into the fold. Your chin can stretch out over the floor or your chin can gently land down on the floor or a block. All right, use your next inhale to lift back up to seated. Release your bind and rest. Just a moment, let your shoulders relax. That might be intense on the shoulders coming out of that bind. And again, check in with your breath. Pace it out, even breath, slightly longer exhale. Release your lotus if you had lotus and come back into an easy cross leg position if you're not already there. And then transition over into hands and knees, tabletop pose. We're going to take headstand. So you can now set your elbows down on the floor under the center of your shoulder heads. Your head comes behind your open palms with your fingers still interlaced. You can start to lift your feet up to the sky. If you're using any props, maybe your feet come on a chair seat or the wall and walk your feet up. If your head is on the floor for headstand, you're pressing into the head using your neck muscles as well as pressing down into your elbows using your upper back muscles. So try not to dump your weight into your elbows, wrists, and head. Instead, push the floor away, and you've got to push the floor away from above. Another option to this headstand is dolphin pose. Head is not on the floor for that, and you're simply in an elbow-based dog. Press your feet up to the ceiling if you're taking headstand. If you've got dolphin pose and you're lifting one leg up, activate the leg that's lifting. And the foot that's still on the floor, you're lifting that heel and pressing the lifted leg even higher overhead. And that's going to help strengthen your shoulders. And if you're taking that variation in dolphin with one leg up, make sure that you switch sides and spend equal time in both sides. If you're still in a headstand or even a downward facing dog or dolphin pose, focus on the quieting of the mind that this pose brings about. Focus on your breath. It's different when you're upside down. Things appear differently. So notice how your breath appears to you here. The texture again, the pace, the length where you can feel it. Use your next exhale to lower down slowly and rest in child's pose, Balasan. Relax your arms behind you. Let your hips rest on your heels now and let your forehead rest on the floor. You can close your eyes down here and focus on that breath, calming down and opening up your back, softening your hips, and again, quieting the mind. All right, we're going to come back up to seated so you can use your hands back on the floor and roll up to an upright position. Again, cross your ankles and come back over to a seated pose. So you can set up for boat, half boat actually, Ardha Navasana. Balancing on your sacrum, lift your head, lift your shoulders, and hollow out the front of your body. Chin towards chest, gaze to your feet, stretch your arms forward. Feel how strong this pose is, but how easy it is for you. So you don't feel shorter or more contracted. You feel more contracted. You feel more powerful. You feel a sudden burst of energy right before Shavasana, which I think is super cool to do because now when you lower down, exhale, let everything go, you can feel your breath, the spike in the energy. You can feel the effort from the half boat you just did. But you can feel that effort slowly fading away into calm, peaceful, even breath. So it's more relaxing now, but you can feel the path that it takes to get there. And with that progression from that energizing breath into this relaxing breath, you can feel some body parts start to relax. So fingers and toes 
your legs, your shoulders, your arms, your core. You can feel a sinking into the floor breath by breath and more support from the floor. Let the floor just hold you. Let the back of your body get heavy and let the front of your body be light and soft, supported by the back, supported by the ground. And with each breath, you feel the connection to the ground in different parts of your body, from your head down to your feet. You feel the lightness above and the soft, steady support, stability, firm, yet gentle below. And you stay here as long as you'd like. But when you are ready to come up to seated, you can make your way into a seated position. Start by putting your feet on the floor first and maybe staying there for an extra few rounds of breath. And if you're still resting, take your time. But when you do get to your seated pose, you might want to revisit Lotus again. Maybe stay there for a brief meditation. Maybe stay in an easy seated position wherever you feel like you can comfortably sit and just focus on that breath, uniting your body, your mind, your thoughts, your feelings into a sense of unity with serenity, contentment, peace. When you end your practice, take a moment to bow to you Bow to all the things that you think get in the way of your serenity and your peace and let them move on. And then bow yet again to all the things that you experience, all the pleasant experiences, all the moments, the awareness, the mindfulness, being in the present moment that you experience when you let all of those things move away. And bow to the ability to keep doing this daily because once you get rid of those things they come back they don't stay away but that's the beauty of this practice it's constant it's always there for you and it's something that you can use your entire life to calm your mind and unite that body and soul with serenity and peace and of course one final knot of gratitude to yourself for all that you do here and everywhere, all of your efforts. If you haven't at this point yet, take your hands to heart center and bow to you and tell yourself, thank you and great job. <laughs>